Hello, and uh, welcome to another, another, uh, shoe, uh, reading from the shoebox poet. Sorry, it went blank. Uh, people were texting me, or somebody's texting me. Hmm. Sorry, y'all. People, should I put it on silent, but see if it can. But we are picking up, and as I say, we're about halfway through uh, Death of a Gentleman, Losing the Magic of Love. And when I, my friend Dwight was the one who came up, who came up with this title, as I mentioned, maybe mentioned before. And a lot of this is, you know, I usually ask my friends, you know, to give me suggestions when it comes to um, book titles or certain things because I want to, I really value their opinion when it comes to certain things. Uh, the name of this poem is called Toss. There are times when all the hurt washes over me like a tidal wave. Guilt, pain, shame make me feel numb and wanting a piece of happiness, tasting the fruits of love without a bitter sting of loneliness, and these same thoughts I woke, wake up to, where I toss and turn wondering if I would ever know the feeling of a kiss upon my lips, and not to be afraid of rejection because you will be here with, uh, with a love so deep it fills the gap stuck in my soul. I really don't want to close things out, but I guess I'm going to have to close things out. Is sitting here barking at me and telling me that, oh, the frame rate's a little too slow there. I said, well, whatever. Hello, Richard. Good to see you, man. The next one's called Parliament. It's listening to the chorus of voices in the parliament, echoing out of the darkness, where the madness is a heartbeat away. Everybody knows and pretends to understand, but they don't know. They know how close you really are to letting it all just slip away because you dance on the edge of a knife and balance like a scale. You know, that it is to see. When it comes to mental illness, there is no set rule to what causes these, those voices. And silencing means shutting off the only voice you're familiar with, the voice of you. Uh, there was a time when I had to take uh, medicine, you know, anxiety and medicine for depression and anxiety because I was going through those things, uh, going through a rough time after my mother had passed. And so I was just trying to really understand what was going on or how to be able to take care or do the things that um, or function as a normal human being without somebody being um, being there hey Sherry and this poem is basically that because I was doing well I was dealing with this back during the pandemic because I was at the at the point of like whether I should go and uh, seek about you know getting therapy and and getting back on meds, which I really didn't didn't do that because at that time I really didn't need it. Um, I was able to overcome those things. The next one is called Cage. She had been afraid for so long and letting go of her heart. Her mother told her that her heart was a terror. This is why it placed her in a cage, deep within her, covered by her ribs. But one day she met him, and felt her heart flutter, inside, and felt her heart flutter inside her chest. As she tried everything to keep it locked away, only the more she, it's, he spoke to her, the more he held her hand and kissed her lips. Her heart broke free from the chain, so it had, she had no choice but to set her heart free, and love him forever. And it's basically that moment of, because um, this right here was basically wrote, uh, was about a poem for a word prompt, 
and it's about having a caged heart. Um, sorry, had an idea. The process of a writer. You know, the inspiration strikes at mere moments when you're just not even realizing it. And you're just like, oh! So here's another word prompt. This one's called new. This was something new. Being here with you. It was like I was home again. Clinging and holding on to you. It was all I ever wanted to feel. But being, lo being lost. But found again. Home and safe in your arms. Now, this right here is about a girl that I kind of liked, or I liked, and we shared a an intimate moment. It wasn't those, nothing sexual, but just an intimate moment, which where even though we were in a crowded room full of people, it was just us being there, and it was the most alive I ever felt in that moment. And, it, and it's kind of frustrating because you you want something more with somebody, but deep down. It, it gets frustrating because you can't have that anymore or you, you 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 don't have access to that person to receive those things and you know this person I met this person back in 2019 and it was kind of a surprise because I really didn't think I would see her again or or, they, or even know I would have saw her that night so uh, and this this happened at the ball at the wall <clears throat> me. oh it was it was just um, really a um, short-circuiting experience. Uh, next poem is called Wax. Your fingers dance along my skin as our eyes met. Lying here without you, letting our fingers lace and twine, your tenderness, your tender kisses left my molten wax of heart, palpable in your touch. As you shaped it into something more to reflect your love for me, Mending the cracks and the broken pieces that were weathered over time, leaving your fingerprints imprinted in the, fa in the fragile art you had created with your touch of your soul. And, you know, this was something that connects to that girl, to the girl. Um, being where I, you know, I had this kind of, uh, you know, fascination with different things. Uh, I saw this, um, this meme a while back where this uh, it was a werewolf protecting a woman, and he it, the thing said um, she does not you know it's just like basically saying that she doesn't need me to protect her, and the reason why I protect her is because she is everything I am not, and you you kind of realize that because the you know the person that you fall in love with she they are everything that you are not. Because you are not, uh, say so you are not um, the yin and yang of, of things. You, know, you really don't want to get into a situation where you're in a bad relationship. But you know, it's just you know, long story short. Yeah. Don't you? Is it sometimes? Don't you? You know, you wish that you didn't have to. You don't want to be in my mind. Trust me. Um, this poem's called One Side. I should have known that things were not as they seemed to with you. Each encounter left me with more questions rather than answers. A one-sided affair where I let down my guard to be human with you, but it didn't matter. All those dreams of wanting so much more with you was only a fantasy, one where I wanted to look in your eyes forever and ever. It all came to an end and crashed at my feet while I turned the pages telling your story of your greed and your heart and my heart broke only it wasn't out of pain for myself but just sorrow for the person I thought you were that doesn't exist and that is a shame and this is about the woman I had a uh, off and on again relationship with for about three years from two years to it's, it's time it's a principle fuck off Anyway, um, but yeah, just off and on kind of thing, uh, because as I found out more and more about her, because I'm just like, oh, wait a minute, I see this here, I, I see this, you know, this here, I see this, uh, and you're telling me this, though, but I see this, and I read this, 
But you're telling me this. Do you have a twin? No. Okay. That makes sense now. Uh, this poem right here is called Chorus of Us. You wrote a song about me so I could fit into your box. Those words aren't me because I play those memories back and forth in my head. So you backpedal saying you didn't mean those words you wrote about me. The damage was done the moment you placed the ink upon the pages, rhyming words to fit the chorus of your heartstrings. It's a bittersweet song of a sad melody. I only wish the meaning of the song was different, where our love grew instead of dying the way it did for us. Fantasy football, that's what that is. And, uh, but, but this right here is a little different. This right here is uh, basically, um, uh, there was a song, that this is, uh, there's a girl who wrote a song, I think it's uh, either Evanescence or something, and uh, Cedar, or but I kind of played it into a situation, well, not a situation to deal with me, but just playing in a different situation of what was somebody be going through. Um, <clears throat> another poem is, this one's called Legend of Fire. The scarlet goddess with amber eyes of crimson burning like embers in a blazing inferno, raging out of control. She's a warrior blessed by fire, showered by sparks, and kissed by the flames of God. She is a woman, the only living creature who can bring life from the, from the spirit world. And you want to tame her, harness her power, capture her flame. Then you might as well close your fingers around smoke, reach for mist. Only Prometheus was able to tame the fire of a woman to bring her to life, and you were not him. And this one right here is basically, it was, um, it, I think it was a, um, a word prompt, uh, I think dealing with the word fire, I'm not really sure, but, but that's what I think, because I was just kind of thinking about how some guys, you know, they're like, um, some men, this like, you know, I'm going to tame her, I'm going to tame, you know, I'm going to take away everything, and I say, no, nah, man, you can't do crap, because she's just going to eat you alive and burn you to cinders because she don't really give a crap. You're not in her league. So, and that's, that's basically what that poem's about. Nightfall. I dream of nightfall, of spring, lying among the evergreen. I dream of you, of your beauty. Crashing upon me like a wave, the scent of you making my senses run wild at the thought of feeling your naked silhouette. But those are things to come as I lay here with you, drawn into your body with the taste of your lips, quenching my thirsty, uh, in my thirst, sorry, and wanting to taste the familiar, uh, the familiar flavor of you beyond the ethereal. The eternal sunshine is where my heart is buried, where it will bloom for you. And this is the word uh, prompt, and it's basically uh, going from uh, nightfall, uh, evergreens, and quenching, and bloom. Those were the uh, the word prompts for that. So I just basically put them together. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Stephen. Uh, no, it's been the same one, man. Uh, same microphone. But I'm glad you're all listening. I hope you're all enjoying things. Um, I'm glad you're all here. And, uh, Feeling is the next poem. I never said I love you when I should have. Told you these simple words of stealing being, being selfish and how I felt for you. And letting time pass and not being honest with you. And, uh, you know, this basically just, uh, you know, trying to be open and honest with your feelings about how you feel about somebody before things happen. Uh, before you lose them and all that. The next poem is called Human. I... 
Okay, I just want to make sure because this thing hit, you know, it said 15 minutes, so I don't know. Uh, we'll probably do this this last poem here, and then I'll have to let you go, but I'm going to um, say a few things afterwards. But this poem's called Human. I just want to make sure. Your words are like a melody, and they untie my mind with every syllable you speak. With every velvet voice connection the dots strung along the curves and lines of your body as I imagine the feel of your skin and the taste of you. When your kisses are all the ways you make me feel so much more human than being empty and lost. It's the way you feel when you've wanted to hold someone in your arms and act the act of contact where you feel the skin of a woman. How smooth she feels as your fingers glide along the fine hairs of her body and watching her respond to your touch. Along the earth lines beneath her flesh unwinding the knots and the strings and making love to a goddess. Uh, that one right there is basically is, uh, reminiscing about the, uh, the girl that I had the uh, off and on thing with. And so we'll leave it there. We're at page 71. So we have basically uh, 26 more pages to go before we reach the end of the book. Uh, so a couple of things. I just want to let you know that, first off, uh, check out my friend Sarah Aikenhead. Cast it into the fire. The link should be there. If not, then I will put that link in there for her. Uh, her podcast covers Lord of the Rings, uh, House of the Dragon, which is streaming now, Redwall, and every once in a while they do like uh, reviews of the book, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings books and the uh, Ice and Fire. So you know, definitely give it a you know, definitely check her out. Uh, she's been doing it. She just did her seventy sixth um, podcast, which was which is a you know, pretty good. I mean, she just passed that seventy five milestone, which was really awesome. Uh, for her, which is definitely something to applaud. Uh, check out my my friend uh, oh, and uh, my friend Solo Dolo. He is, has a uh, simulated uh, NCAA games and uh, NFL with uh, dynasties and player uh, chapters, and he's over here on Facebook too. Uh, check out my other friend Jenna Jinx and. Her her page, Jenna Jink Portraits. She does all kinds of portraits and stuff. She uh, hand uh, draws stuff by hand. Definitely give her a check out. She may not have it, but she does commission. So I don't know if she has anything up on her on her website. We don't know if she has a website, but I know she has a Facebook page. So definitely check that out. So also, Amazon is selling my book. Uh, word for Muse in a paperback, this book, for eleven dollars over on Amazon. So definitely check it out and uh, get you a copy because uh, it's on sale. Don't know why, but it's on sale, and I'm not complaining. As long as it sells, as long as the book sells. But again, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. Love you all. Uh, keep watching. I will have a to doing a show next weekend, next Sunday. Y'all take it easy. And have your good. Yep, that is a good price. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, thank you. And also, yeah, I, I forgot. Uh, Bill. Uh, also is on uh, Bill Miller, uh, Bill Roland Miller, Miller. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, and you can kill me, <laughs> kill me later. But Bill and Sarah both do the podcast for Casting Into the Fire. Um, definitely check them out. And uh, yes, Steve, that is eleven dollars. Uh, definitely, you know, if you get a copy, I will sign it for you if I ever see you. Uh, but. Y'all take it easy, and uh, have a good night, and take care.